Hi, I'm Alan Smith, and welcome to beautiful Costa Rica. Now, not only are we here to absorb this gorgeous, lush landscape, but we're here to discover the proverbial fountain of youth. You see, Costa Ricans are known as Ticos, and they have a longer life expectancy than other developed nations. And it's considered to be one of the happiest countries in the world. So you gotta ask yourself why. So let's find out. Pura Vida literally translates into the pure life. Now, this is actually the official mantra, if you will, of Costa Rica. Everyone embraces it. And it's really underscored by this idea of living peacefully, embracing nature, and really having great food and companionship. It's living life to the fullest without stress. And who can argue with that? Of course, living well is directly connected to eating well. When you come to a market like this, the advantage is everything's fresh. And when it's fresh, it has a higher nutritional value and it also tastes better. The other advantage of coming to a place like this is you can see the produce right out of the field and you can connect to the farmers who are actually producing it. You know where your food's coming from. Here in one of the open air markets in Heredia, just outside of San Jose in Costa Rica, it's a very active day. You see all over the world, markets provide people with a communal meeting spot, a place to trade goods, as well as a place to share a little gossip. Most Costa Ricans like to come to the, um, the market and get their fresh vegetables and fresh groceries and so forth. Because it's, it's nice, it's more like a culture, you know, and then you can find fresh things. Well, anything that you're looking for, from vegetables, fruits, grains, you know, homemade food like you can see over here, because this is more Costa Rican style. The flavor is like when you eat in a grandma's house. I guess probably Costa Rica people like to keep their traditions. At least here you can choose what you want, you can go around and check and you have different options, right? Here you find a little bit of everything. And you can go around and check prices and the best price is the best deal, you know. Gracias. You know, visiting your local farmer's market is one of the best ways you can embrace your own form of Pura Vida. What's better than visiting your own local farmer's market and getting fresh food to eat or drink right from the farm? Modern studies continue to support the fact that by drinking coffee, you can actually improve vascular function. Those who drink coffee tend to live a little longer. You see, Costa Rica has been producing coffee beans, well, since the late 1700s, with global success. Now, what's interesting about this environment is perfect for growing coffee beans, mainly because of the climate and the volcanic soils that exist here. Forget about the idea of coffee being the best part of waking up. Coffee this fresh, it's the best part of any day. Today we're gonna learn everything about the coffee from the seed to the cup, step by step. It all starts with a little coffee seed, like this one. And then six weeks later, the seed germinates and we get this. Two weeks later, the parchment falls off and the first two leaves come out, the butterfly stage. And then when the coffee plant is about four months old, it's ready to be replanted into this plastic bag. Here we keep it in the bag for one year. After that, we replant it in the fields and we have to wait three more years. Three years? Uh -huh, before it can produce coffee for the first time. 
the coffee never ripen at the same time. So the pickers, they have to return to the same plant like five times because they only pick the red ones, the ones that are ripe. Good quality coffee is hand picked. In Costa Rica, we can only have Arabica by law since 1986 because of the quality. Arabica, it is known in the world because of the good quality. The coffee bean has four layers, four husks. The first one, it is the outer skin, the pulp, that is red when it's ripe. The second one, it is the mucilage, or the slime. The third one, it is the parchment, the hard layer that protects the bean. And the final layer, it is the silver cap. That one comes off when the coffee bean is roasted. And then we get two seeds. It's actually a seed, but the people call it beans, so let's call it beans. There are two beans in one fruit, but sometimes only one of the two seeds or beans get fertilized. When that happens, we get a round bean that we call peaberry. Only 5% is peaberry, and it's not only different in shape, but also different in flavor. It is sweeter and softer. So this is the coffee bean. This is how it looks like when it's ripe. It's red. And inside, we get two seeds. And this, the pulp, comes back to the fields as compost at the end. This is the mucilage, the slime. If you taste it, it's sweet, actually. It is sweet, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. There's a big tank. They fill it all the way to the top with water. Then they put the coffee inside. There, we separate the good beans from the bad ones. The good beans are the big ones and heavy ones, so they sink. And the bad beans are the green ones, the dry ones, so they float. In that way, we separate them. There are five peeling machines. We call them chancador. All this, all this machinery was brought from London by the German family 120 years ago and they still work. After peeling, we put the coffee in big fermentation tanks. There, we remove the mucilage, the slippery stuff by fermentation. Then the coffee is washed and is taken out to the patios for drying. There, they spread the coffee on a thin layer and every 45 minutes, they rake it to turn it over from dawn to dusk for five sunny days. But sometimes the weather doesn't permit that because it's raining. So they have to dry the beans mechanically. It takes about one day for the beans to be dry. It's faster, but the best way is outside for five sunny days. We get more flavors, more oils outside. This is the roasting room. So what we do is that we take the beans like this without the parchment. Then the coffee goes inside a rotating drum and the flame is heating the drum, not the beans. Here you can see the different stages. Coffee with the parchment on, with, with the parchment off, the pea berry, and this is Dika. After roasting, he puts the coffee down there. That is for cooling down 10 minutes. Then ready for packaging, over there. Everything is done manually. So Ronaldo, this coffee plantation, the way in which you all grow the coffee is kind of an example of Pura Vida, isn't it? Because yes. of the harmony that's created here. And, the, and, and really happiness, I think. Yes, you can see that here, beside the coffee, we also have some bananas. Yes, I see them. They are very important. They work as a windbreakers. Also, when we have many of them, we cut the stem and we lay them down like this one. Like we see here. Uh -huh. Compost. Okay, so it's composting and feeding the coffee plants. Correct. Of course, these stalks of the banana trees have a lot of water in them. Yes. So does that help as well? Sure, in the dry season, well, the 60% of the stem is water. Oh. So it comes down to the roots and works as a natural irrigation system. When, when these plants reach a point where they're no longer productive, what happens to the plants? They cut the roots and they pull it out. Right. And they burn it in the ovens to dry the beans. So the, Everything is pura vida, recycled. Recycled, how uh -huh. wonderful, uh -huh. right. And so new plants are then planted in the place. So what's the lifetime? 30 years. 30 Here, years. 30 years. Yeah. Uh -huh. During that time, we will prune it three times. So that means that the coffee plant will be 10 years inactive. It will only produce 20 years, and right. that's it. And then what about some of the trees that are used? Uh, because I know that the coffee likes a little bit of shade. Yes, we have some mangoes like lemons, sweet limes, avocado. Really good. The coffee needs about four hours of shade per day. I see. That is why we have them. 
really. It is mm. it is beautiful the way it all works together. Uh -huh. And you all use very little chemicals in the way of trying to manage the coffee. Correct, correct. This company, they are Rainforest Alliance certified, which means that all the chemicals we use are eco-friendly. Bernardo, thank you so much for a wonderful tour. I, I feel completely caffeinated. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, my pleasure. I'm glad you like it. Thank you thank for coming. You. For me, Pura Vida is embodied in the garden. Places of beauty that are calm and close to nature do wonders for the soul by taking you out of the hustle and bustle. Literally stopping to smell the roses reduces stress, which is a large factor in health and overall happiness. One of the best places to relax among the flowers in Costa Rica is the Elsie Kinsler Botanical Garden. Part park, part conservancy, the gardens are home to thousands of species of plants, including all the native flora from around the country. Randall, this is such a beautiful place. Yes, it's a big one place. To work. <laughs> well, you're very lucky to work here. Yes, many many people told me that because in this place I can hear the birds, also the river, oh. and I don't feel any stress or any pressure. <laughs> well, I'm very envious. You know, the whole idea of Pura Vida, I mean, this in a way sort of capsulates it, doesn't it? Yes, this place, if, if you want to have a Pura Vida time, you have to visit us. We got more than two thousand different tropical plants. Two thousand? Yes, it's a lot. That is a lot. That's quite a collection. Yes, we try to get as much as, much as we can. So Randall, how large is this garden? The way you wind around through it, it feels like it's infinite. The place is nine hectares, but the interesting fact is that 20 years ago, this place was a coffee plantation. Really? Yes. So Terrace, just like a regular coffee plantation. Yes. We took off the, all the coffee plants and started to bring it, all the tropical plants here. We are in a very good place for the plants. The plants grow fast. They certainly have. It's hard to believe this garden's only 20 years old. Yes. How big were the palms when you started? Because they're huge. 20 years ago, those palms were like this size. <laughs> right now, kidding. we can climb it if, you, if we want. <laughs> it's the perfect environment for growing. I guess it's that volcanic soil yes. and climate. We are an ambiental project. So as a ambiental project, we teach to the high schools and schools how to grow the plants in an organic way. Also, we teach how to paint. Oh, how wonderful. So students can come here and paint this, this paradise. Yes, also we make for the seniors, we teach all the med medicinal plants from the garden and they enjoy it a lot. I think that's fantastic that you have programs for seniors here. Um, in fact, Costa Rica is well known for their population living longer. The Costa Ricans live their, their life without stress. And if you get a stress in Costa Rica, yeah. in 10 minutes you can go in a place like this. Yeah, and this, immediately the stress goes down. Many people say that Costa Rica is the, happy, the happiest country of the world. I have to say that all the people that I've met on this trip in Costa Rica have been very happy and joyful. And so I think you're right. Gracias. Well, you know, you don't have to live in a place as beautiful as Costa Rica to practice Pura Vida. You know, if Ponce de Leon had known that the key to longevity is really a life full of love, happiness, eating the right things, and a low stress environment, he probably would have never left home. So the next time you're feeling a little stressed out, just remember Pura Vida. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith.